again, Internet. It's so nice to see you again. So sorry I've been gone again another long period of time. Um, got kicked out of the dorm, moved into a house, so now we are nice and comfy. I got everything together, and then I started working on the dual extruder. So let's just get right to it. We're going to move right to the extruder. First thing I'm going to show you is all the things you're going to have to 3D print. All right, so Mike Kelly from the 3D Forum has made this extruder kit. This is the first one he's made. He's made two different ones. I'm just using his first model because it worked really well for what I needed. So you're going to have to 3D print the actual X carriage itself, and then the, the fan shroud, and the actual fan connector to the X axis itself. I'm not going to worry about this today. I'm going to be working on the extruder for now, and I'll show you how to put the fans on in the next video. So for this part of the video, we're just going to go over the X carriage itself. This is an X carriage designed by Mike Kelly from the Robo 3D Forum. It takes two LM8 UU bearings and you can attach the belt for your GT2 drive with some zip ties around this little piece right here. And then you can put a bolt here for your limit switch for your X carriage. If you have an R1 Plus, your X carriage limit switch is going to be on the X carriage itself, so you might have to do some rewiring or use the different model. I'll have both of them linked down below. Again, Mike Kelly has developed two versions of the X carriage for dual extrusion, and this was the first one, and the first one I decided to use because it just looked a little sleeker. Now, there's not too much difference between the Chimera slash Slyclops housing and the E3D itself. Essentially, you just take this 30 millimeter fan match it up with the screw holes that are in the side of the heat sink and you're given two screws and you screw those through the holes in the heat sink. Now the two Bowden couplers have already been put in for the top of mine but you just put these two in here and then on the opposite end you'll have the two sections for the heater blocks. Now I'm gonna skip over assembling the heater block for the Chimera because it's the exact same as the E3D V6, the only difference being this heat break. And this one is non-threaded, but it assembles the exact same way. Now, you wanna make sure that the heater blocks are facing away from each other so that they are not going to interfere with your wiring on the bottom. So the end of the heater block goes this way and the other end of the heater block goes that way. You have these small set screws that go through the side of the housing on the heat sink. That holds the heater block in place on the side and go around the other side. So as far as the Camara goes itself, that's what it looks like fully assembled. And now we're going to put this on the carriage. So there are three small screws that also come with the Chimera slash Cyclops head. What you're going to do is you're going to line the holes in the top of the 3D print up with the top of the extruder it'll expose the three holes that you need to screw this into. So now that the extruder is all put together, I'm going to go put this back on the X carriage and then I'm going to go adjust it on the 3D printer. So once you have the carriage assembled and put back together, and I'll put a link at the top of the video to show you how to assemble and disassemble the entire printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the set screw on the side of the printer right here and then I'm going to lower the carriage down. So after you lower it down all the way you're going to want to undo both of the set screws on both sides and then you're going to let it home that should allow the heater blocks to set into place and then you're going to tighten them in their new position and that means that they're flat with the bed so the wiring management is done, and I put the case back on. Now it's time to wire the dual extruder into the RAMS board. So now that we're done with assembly and installation, we can move on to the first hard component, which is the electrical wiring. Now, it's too complicated to look underneath the bed of my printer, so I'm going to grab a second RAMS board and show you where to wire everything from there. So this is just one of the RAMS boards I have laying around. This goes on top of your Arduino Mega but the Arduino we're not concerned about right now. It's just the RAM board. On our traditional setup, you should have four of these drivers. But when you want to move to a dual extruder setup, you're going to need another one of these. Now you're going to take your new driver and you're going to put it 
in the new spot for your new extruder. Now you want to make sure that there's already three jumpers in this place right there or else the driver won't actually work. Make sure that the pins line up correctly and then just place that in the ramps board. Now, what we're going to have to do as far as the wiring goes, uh, these are your fans. And if you have an R1, they're plugged into D9. And if you have an R1+, Plus, they're plugged into D10. But we have to remove them, and we're going to replace it with the heater cartridge of the new extruder. And this is going to go into D9 if you have an R1, and D10 if you have an R1+. Plus. Of course, you're going to need a second motor to run the new extruder, and that's going to go here on E1 instead of the E0 port. And the last thing you're going to need is your thermistor. That's going to get plugged into the T1 port over here for your thermistors. And of course, there's a lot more wires coming out of the board, so there's going to be your extruder thermistor, your bed thermistor, all the motor wires that come across all of these. You're going to have your power, you're going to have your heated bed, now your two extruders. So there's a lot going on. That's why I took a raw ramps board and showed you where to plug everything in. So if you need any more detailed instructions on the electrical system for the Robo 3D, I have an entire video for the electrical system that you can view and see how the entire thing is put together. But now that we're done with the electrical system, we can move on to the next hard component, which is the firmware. All right, so now it's time to get to the firmware. The first thing you're going to want to do with firmware is find the one that you currently own. I have mine in my Dropbox, and so I'm going to be using the original R1 Plus firmware to do this. And the first thing you're going to do is go over to configuration.h, scroll down to the motherboard section, and right here, you're going to see ramps 1.3 and 1.4. We're going to change ours to motherboard 34 because we're going to have two extruders and one fan. Scroll down a little bit further, and the number of extruders will have to be changed as well to two. And then confirm that everything is put together properly by verifying the code. If everything checks out, you'll have a done compiling notification in Arduino, and now you can upload that to your printer. So I just hit upload on my computer for the firmware to be uploaded to the 3D printer. It's currently going through the USB port. Currently right now my 3D printer is frozen because it is uploading the firmware. And now it's been re-enabled, and now there's two extruders. So we're finally on the last stretch. The hardware's taken care of, the firmware's taken care of. All we gotta do now is the software. Now, the software is very easy. I'm gonna be showing you how to do this in Cura. So obviously the first thing you wanna do is open up Cura. So I'm going to make a new machine so we can just start from scratch. So I got the Robo 3D in the other category right here. And Cura's ready. All set and ready to go. So if you look at the start G-code, you're not going to have G-code that actually matches what you want. So I'm going to run my profile. So this is the startup G-code I currently use for the 3D printer. I'm going to be using this for the dual extruder as well. But first we need to go add a dual extruder in the software. So we're going to go to machine settings. And then here, extruder count, you're going to say 2. Now you're going to hit OK and then you should be able to go back to machine settings. When you're back in the machine settings, you're going to be able to set the extruder offset. Now, I'm not too sure if you're using the exact same one I'm using, but if you're using the E3D Chimera, it's going to be 18 millimeters for your Y offset, and if you installed it straight, you should have zero offset on your X axis. And this is all taken care of, you just hit OK. So now you've added a second extruder to the printer, in your start G code, um, you're going to have a start G code and a start 2 G code. The start 2 G code is going to act a little weird because it's not going to act like your single head G code. So I've already gone through and pre-made the code before I actually did anything with the dual extruder. So I'm going to open my profile for my printer. 
So this is the code I'm using for the dual extrusion. I'm going to put this in the description if you guys want to use that. But what you need to make sure is that you are declaring which extruder you want to use and which one you want to heat up. Now the print temperature 2 is important because that defines your second print temperature in the basic tab. Um, I'm obviously using the same printer temperature, but if you're using two different materials, you want to be sure that you have that correct. So now you have Cura set up properly. Now we need to print something in dual extrusion. All you have to do is go to Thingiverse and type in dual, and then you should get a lot of dual extrusion prints. I use this cube to calibrate my 3D printer. So I'm going to download the file. To make sure you found the right calibration block, you can find my made in the made section of this file. I'll also have a link in the description. All right, so once you download the file, you're gonna drag and drop both of them. And in Cura, you're going to right click the objects and click dual extrusion merge. This will merge the two objects together and then you'll have a completely dual extruded 3D printed part. You of course save it to the SD card, run it on the printer. And if everything goes well, you should end up with a print that looks like that. So I hope this video helps you install your dual extruder on your 3D printer. So sorry it took me such a long time. Obviously I'm not in the dorm anymore. School ended, I had finals, got kicked out of the dorm, and then everything went nuts after that. If you want to know more details, you can check out my vlog channel. I'll go over all of the problems I ran into and why I haven't uploaded a video in a while. But... I am back now. Each Wednesday, I plan to upload at least one video, and I'm going to try to catch up to the quota that I made at the beginning of the year for my New Year's resolution. But as always, if you have any questions about this video or suggestions for future videos, make sure you leave your comments down below. If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure you click that subscribe button. And, of course, thanks for watching.